Is this working? I'm Charles Sappenfield. I'm Dean of the College of Architecture and Planning, and I welcome you to this wonderful occasion. Today we mark the end of the paper period of the building. That's this, that's this set of plans here, and you're welcome to look at those after the uh, festivities here. We mark the end of the paper period, the programs and justifications and proposals and modifications, all that result in that set of construction documents. And now we begin the real thing. In a few minutes, we offer all of you the chance to review the plans and to dig some dirt with us. First, we want to hear a few words from a few people, and then I'll introduce just some of the many people who have a part in this building process. First to speak to us today, is the president of Ball State University, Dr. Jerry Anderson. Dr. Anderson. Thank you very much, Dean Sappenfield. Exactly nine years and 10 months ago, on a Thursday, on the 10th of September, 1970, the university broke ground for a new College of Architecture and Planning building. Today, we break ground for an addition which will triple the size the college was established in 1965, the same year that Ball State Teachers College became Ball State University. The college's growth and change has paralleled the university's growth and change these 15 years. First year students were accepted in September 1966 and the college was temporarily housed in the formal, former Naval Reserve Armory. Several of the college's constituent groups had proposed earlier that the architect for the new building be chosen by competition open to architects registered and resident in the state of Indiana. A two-stage competition was initiated in July of 1967. The winning architect, Melvin D. Berkey of South Bend, was announced on 19 January 1968. The first building was occupied in March 1972. Since 1972, the college has increased its one program in architecture to a total of three undergraduate programs and four graduate programs in the areas of environmental design, architecture, landscape architecture, urban and regional planning, and historic preservation. Numbers of students, faculty, and staff have doubled. The college held its first classes outside the new building in 1973. By 1977, the college was housed in seven different buildings, scattered a mile apart across the campus. The 1979 legislature approved a new building addition. Again, the university conducted a two-stage competition to choose an architect, landscape architect team. In 1979, the winner from a field of 39 entries was Krumlisch Sporletter and Associates from South Bend. They had been finalists in the 1967 competition. The successful general contractor was Hagerman Construction Company, the firm which constructed the first stage building. Hagerman finished the first building early in March, and this building is expected to be completed before September of 1982. The College of Architecture and Planning competition of 1967 was a first for the state universities of Indiana, in a state which has known only few competitions, public or private. Several environmental design schools nationwide have chosen competitions for architect selection, but Ball State's college may be again the first to follow up with a second competition when an addition was proposed. The first competition discovered a young architect, 28 years old, whose designs for other buildings in Indiana won without, within a four-year period two Indiana Society of Architects biennial awards in addition to the subsequent ISA award to Ball State in 1972. Similar opportunities are presented in the second building to advance the state of the art of architecture and landscape architecture. We acknowledge significant debts to many, to the anonymous donor who supported both the 1967 and 1979 competitions to the legislature and the Commission for Higher Education who funded our needs, to the Indiana professionals and those who added the effort of an entry to their continuing support for the college, to Charles Graves and the jury who devoted so much professional time, to Ball State personnel all across this campus and to the faculty, staff, and the students of the college. The results of this achievement will bring great credit to the professions, to education, 
to state government, to the public, indeed to all of us. This is a proud and happy day for Ball State University. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. And now we would like to hear from the Interim Provost and Vice President for Instructional Affairs, Dr. Rita Gardio. Dr. Gardio. This new building for our campus represents two extremely significant achievements for educational programs at Ball State University. The first achievement is to unite the students and the faculty of the College of Architecture and Planning into one building so that they will be able to function in a closer, more efficient, more positive and interactive environment. Secondly, the building will house the first solar education center in Indiana, a center which will be the focus for Ball State University's research and public education efforts in the area of energy. The Solar Center will be a truly intercollegiate program in the university, uniting expertise from all five colleges. It will welcome campus groups, as well as groups from the general public, ranging from grade and high school students to adult community interest groups and corporate representatives. This building will be the first at Ball State University to utilize active aspects of solar energy. The solar collectors, which will be a part of the roof of the solar, will be a part of the roof of the solar center. It will also utilize passive energy aspects, such as a sloped glass wall called a solar chimney. This building will be an innovative example, both in architecture and in energy utilization. It will enable Ball State University and Indiana to assume a true leadership role in educating students and the general public in environmental design and energy use and conservation. Thank you, Dr. Guardiol. And now we would like to hear from the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, Mr. Will Parker. Mr. Parker. Thank you, Dean Sappenfield. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> to most people, a groundbreaking ceremony for a new building is probably not a great exciting event. In fact, I have never attended a groundbreaking when crowd control was a problem. <laughs> but to me, the groundbreaking for a new academic f facility is an exciting event. It signifies the actual physical beginning of new opportunities and new experiences for the student and for the teacher. While we today have great learning experiences taking place in facilities that are older than we like to think about, a new building enhances our opportunities. The design of the facility is exciting, and I am particularly pleased with the emphasis the architects have placed on designing a building for students. I'm happy to represent the Board of Trustees here today as we embark upon another new adventure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. And now we would like to hear from the former chairman and member of, current member of the Indiana Commission for Higher Education, incidentally a recent honorary degree recipient from Ball State University, Dr. Van Smith. Thank you, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, the formal approvals supporting this substantial capital commitment for a new College of Architecture and Planning building represent a display of both encouragement and genuine confidence in Ball State by Indiana and all of its citizens. It was 15 years ago that the General Assembly selected Ball State for the location of this College of Architecture and Planning. As I recall, in 1966, there were 189 applicants for the 120 positions in the entering class. Over the years, the entering class has remained at the 120 student size, but the number of application, or applicants has increased to between six and 700 each of the last four years. A recognition, indeed, of a growing respect for the program. For several past years, perhaps several decades, 
publicly supported universities were physically expanding at a rapid and impressive rate to keep up with increasing enrollments. Those days seem to be behind us as we attempt to predict future campus enrollments. These future enrollment projections permit Indiana and its universities to give increased attention to program quality. This new building permits consolidation of the architectural academic programs in one location. It substantially improves the quality of the space utilized. It allows the university to abandon a portion of its most substandard space at the time of occupation of this new energy efficient facility. Indeed, an improvement in quality of facilities for Ball State. A new architecture building on a campus traditionally noted for teachers training is further indication, if indeed any indication is needed, of Indiana's continued commitment to support a broad range of academic programs, thus assuring the development of a true university at Ball State. Such a broadening of academic programs and facilities is hopefully not viewed as competitive to the traditional college role, for it not only enhances the opportunities of the newer colleges, but it should lend vitality and prestige to the existing respected teachers college programs. My personal association with the capable staff of Ball State leads me to be optimistic that the emerging challenge of utilizing academic facilities in a more innovative manner, conducive to serving students of a wider variety in both age and background, in both traditional and new programs will certainly be met at Ball State in future years. On behalf of the Commission, congratulations to the trustees, the faculty, the administration, and the students as you begin construction of what obviously is going to be a superstructure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And now I would like to make uh, some, inter some introductions to remind us all of the significant involvement of many and the teamwork necessary in this building's progress. First, I'd like to introduce, uh, you have already met uh, uh, Mr. Parker, uh, who just spoke, and I would li now like to introduce Miss Christy Swing, student member of the Board of Trustees. Christy, you might raise your hand. Uh, uh, we're very happy to have the uh, support that we have from the legislators in this area who are represented today by uh, Hurley Goodall, uh, so Representative Hurley Goodall. We're also happy to see our professional society colleagues here today. Uh, Harold McGee, President of the Indiana Chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects. Harold? I'm not sure whether Wayne Smith made it uh, from, who's president of the Indiana Society of Architects is here or not. He is not, and also the president of the Indiana chapter of the American Planning Association could not be here. The campus master planning committee recommends all buildings and plans on campus, and that committee is chaired by our campus planner, Mr. Maurice Mann. Maury? Representing our building committee today is the chairman, Professor Jack Wyman. Jack? Also on the building committee and representing departments at the college are Kenneth Carpenter, chairman of the Department of Architecture. Ken? And Francis Parker, interim chairman of the Department of Urban and Regional Planning. Francis. The chairman of the Department of Landscape Architecture is in St. Louis today and could not be with us. A most important part of this building and a part which makes it unique in America and in American uh, environmental design education is the Solar Energy Center. The Energy Center has been spearheaded headed by Dr. Ronald Cosby. Ron? Also on the building committee representing the students are Jerry Noble from Architecture. Jerry? And Dan Ulrich from Landscape Architecture. Dan. Back to 
The professional advisor for the competition was Chuck Graves, former dean of the School of Architecture at the University of Kentucky. He cannot be here today, but he sent this telegram. Congratulations to you and the university on groundbreaking. Can't remember last project that came in under the budget. So we're very proud that ours did. Probably the hardest job an architect could have is to serve as an architect for 40 architects, landscape architects, and planners. Our architects, Crumlish, Sporleader, and Associates of South Bend seem so far to have made the test. I'd like to introduce Brian Crumlish and Donald Sporleader. There are some other members of, of the architects and landscape architects and engineering team and I'd like for, uh, here today and I'd like for them to raise a hand. There are about a uh, half dozen people around here as a matter of fact. <laughs> Finally, the firm which will take over after we do our shoveling today is Hagerman Construction Company of Fort Wayne. Representing them today is Mr. Mark Hagerman. The first person we'd like to roll up his sleeves, and he's already got them rolled up, is to, and to do a little shoveling, would be Eugene Hamilton, architect from Muncie, Indiana, who worked for many years for a school of architecture in Indiana, and who is especially worked to have a school of architecture on the Ball State University campus. Uh, could Gene Hamilton come here, and I'll even give him a special shovel. Find a soft spot. There isn't a soft spot. <laughs> Don't depend on it. <laughs> there you go. That's about it. <laughs> There you go. There. <laughs> and now we'd like to have uh, six people up here to do some shoveling. Dr. Anderson, Dr. Guardiol, Mr. Parker, Mr. Smith, and Ms. Swain. Mr. Hagerman says his bulldozers do it better. We, uh, we really appreciate your coming today. Anyone who'd like to is, well, is uh, happy to turn over a shovel here. Come ahead. 